guys, it's Chloe. I'm really excited about this next video on playing around with stretchy Kato clay. Now one of the things you want to make sure with your Kato clay is that you're not using anything that is too dry. Um, I did have um, some old packages of Kato clay and uh, I use the glycerin to condition it back to something that's usable, but so I can't really use that um, to make it stretchier. And the reason is, is that when you're making, when you're introducing um, glycerin, which is a uh, a plasticizer, um, it changes the molecular structure of your of your clay, and it will affect its strength when you um, when you bake it. So the first thing that you'd want to do is you want to condition and start off with some nice fresh Kato clay um, and start conditioning, warming, warming it up so that it's a little bit pliable in your hands. And then when you introduce your glycerin, all you really need is like one little um, fingertip full. And you just knead that into the clay you might notice that your clay doesn't you know start doesn't stick don't worry about it as the as you start kneading it it will absorb into the clay and um, you'll know that you have reached the optimal uh, stretchiness I guess when you can take your clay and you do a test So um, take a piece of clay, roll it, make a cylinder, and stretch it and see how long, how far it you can stretch your clay. Now, if that's just not enough, um, if that's not what you're looking at or looking for, and you want it to be a little bit stretchier, um, just add another fingertip and no more. Okay, because you don't want to weaken the strength of the Kato. So just a fingertip of glycerin, add that to your Kato, and again, keep kneading it. When you get your Kato clay to the point that you are happy with how it's stretching, um, and you'll know that just by instinct, you know, like if it, if it stretches um, and you can pull on it without breaking it for, you know, a good you know, inch or so, and you're happy with that, then you're ready to go the next step. And that, again, just going back to your pasta machine and running it through your pasta machine. Now, here's what I would suggest, um, because we're, I'm going to be using mine for um, weaving and also for um, trying some quilling art with it. That's quilling art. <laughs> When you run it through your pasta machine, it's going to pick up everything that that's on your on your rollers. So either clean that off or um, leave it and just uh, sort of roll that into the design of um, what you want to achieve. So I I myself I love when it picks up like certain little specks and things like that because I'm not a purist. I don't want you know if I'm using blue, I don't want pure blue. I can have little flecks and things. Um, it's art after all. Um, so what I do is, uh, because it will stretch also through your pasta machine and fall apart, um, I start at five. See what happens. You'll probably see that you'll get like little treads along the uh, the surface of your of your of your um, your clay. Um, but yeah, so start at start at five and then go down each step to the thinnest setting at nine. Um, initially, what I tried to do is I started at nine, and it was just a mess. <laughs> it stretched it out, it stretched the clay out, and then it had little, you know, treads all over it, and it folded up like a fan. It was just, it didn't work. So uh, I started at five, and I went down each level to, until I got nine, and then you have to be really careful because because of this, the the uh, glycerin, it's really sticky, right? So you want to just make sure again, there's no dust underneath your pasta machine. That's uh, because it'll pick that up. It'll just pick that all up. So get your uh, white sandwich of um, you know white copy paper handy and lay it out, and then just rub out because you'll probably see some folds. Rub out the folds after you put the 
top top part of the sandwich of your sheet. Just rub it out so you can flatten it a little bit. And then just pop it in the oven, but and only put it on 300 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, or I think that's 150 Celsius, and only leave it in there for a good 10, maybe 15 minutes, because it will harden, but you'll see that when you take it out, um, it's great, like you can, you can roll it quite easily without breaking it. What I meant by rolling it is uh, bending it, right? Bend it into a bracelet shape without issue. It's not going to break. It's not going to crack. Um, it's so nice and easy. Um, and then once I'm finished with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make strips and uh, start a project. And there you go. Another idea for using your Kato clay. I hope you enjoy this. Like, subscribe, leave a constructive comment. And until next time, see ya.